This racing driver made an illegal street drifting mixtape and sold it to the public, ending in a police crackdown and his racing license being suspended. Yet despite that, he still went on to become one of the most recognizable names in professional racing. Keiichi Tsuchiya is the guy who went from winning street races to winning Le Mans. He's the reason you even know what drifting is. And his entire story starts in a small village in Japan. So let's dig into the story of Keiichi Tsuchiya to see how a street drifting hoodlum became one of the most iconic racing drivers to ever come out of Japan and earn himself one of the greatest titles in the automotive world, the Drift King. I'm Guff, this is Albon, let's get started. By the way, we're giving away $1,000 to a random subscriber who drops a comment below, so don't forget to hit that big red button and drop a comment. In a small town called Tomi, an unassuming 15-year-old named Keiichi Tsuchiya would practice his driving skills on the winding mountain roads. His KPGC 110 Nissan Skyline was the perfect companion for him to attack the local twisty, and it wasn't long before he was tremendously skilled at the wheel. He would street race up and down the toge, handily beating any competitor that dared line up against him. And it's on those roads that the young Tsuchiya realized that his true calling was not at a desk or on a farm, but perhaps in a racing seat. And that's by and large thanks to someone by the name of Kunimitsu Takahashi. Takahashi is known as the father of drifting, known for his racing career from 1958 to 1999. And throughout that career, he transitioned from winning motorcycle Grand Prix to sliding the racing line at Le Mans. You see, Takahashi had a significant signature style. He would drift his way around corners to give the crowd something to cheer for. And among those many cheering fans was none other than Keiichi Tsuchiya. Inspired by his idol, Tsuchiya would relentlessly hone and improve his driving skill. And at the age of 21, Tsuchiya finally got his shot at the big time and made his racing debut in the Fuji Freshman Series in 1977. But even though Tsuchiya knew that he was a fast driver, he noticed right away that his place on the grid was quite dissimilar to his counter parts. You see, everyone else that lined up to race came from money. Nearly every driver on that grid had a lineage of racing or family sponsorship since their karting days. But Tsuchiya? Tsuchiya was there because street racers couldn't stop talking about him. And word had made its way to a racing team that needed somebody fast and took a bet on a small town street racer like him. And while there were plenty of naysayers and doubters that felt that he didn't belong, it wouldn't be long before Tsuchiya's skills would shut their mouths for good. Skills almost as good as our sponsor, Dbrand. Previously on the D-Brand Chronicles. Dang, you got about a hundred grand in the interior of that car. Got him in if I did. Got him in if I did. Winning isn't going to be easy, but I got to do it. I, I, I don't have much time left. Don't say that, Grandmama. I'll have the money for your surgery. I'm so close. What is that? It's a D-Brand skin. This is it. This is the winner. Thank you, D-Brand. This is for you, Grandmama. Yo, you ruined me. For years, I entered every car show from Toledo to Tokyo, and I always won that prize money. And you know why, Dennis? Because I had to. It's not over for you or your sister. It's time I showed you the way of the skin. Thank you, Master Dennis. You've, you've given me a great gift. I must go now. Grandmama needs me. Come on, Granny, pick up. Oh, thank God. It's totally protected. Grandma, I'm here. Dennis, honey. I, I'm okay now. Thanks to this nice young lady over here, Nurse Phi Bear. Phi Bear? Are you related to Carmen? Yep, I'm his sister. He called me and told me what you had done for him and that your grandma needed help. So I came and made sure your grandma got the help she needed. She's gonna be okay now. Thank you. And good luck to you and your brother. Oh, grandma. I thought I was gonna lose you if I couldn't pay for your surgery. Oh, Dennis. I was always gonna be okay. Other than the hospital putting me into debt for the rest of my life. That kind of sucks. Yeah. It's always better to have some type of insurance to keep you protected. I'll be in the hospital for a couple more days, but thankfully I got something to keep me busy. This steam deck. 
It's nice, Grandma, but I think Dbrand can make it better. Oh, wow, Dennis. This is really something else. It, it looks great, and I can't mess it up with my clumsiness and all that. Where did you get this? It's a Dbrand skin, Granny, and I got it at the link in the description. You can put it on all your devices. Carbon fiber, leather, all sorts of colors and patterns. Whatever your heart desires. Dbrand, always keeping you looking good and protected. Oh, Dennis Rand. I'm so proud of you. So Gia's first few years in the Freshman Series were great, with a number of podium finishes. And that was the springboard for him to start racing in the All Japan Touring Car Championship in 1981. This, this was the big leagues. And his precision weapon of a race car, a KP61 Toyota Starlet. Not exactly a fire-breathing touring car, but it was enough for Tsuchiya to buckle down and master his pace. And every year of racing, he got faster and faster. And by 1984, he was the fastest driver in the Fuji Freshman Series. But as he was rising through the ranks, one thing kept pulling him back down, his wallet. You see, Tsuchiya wanted to race in a new car, a car that he knew would take his career to the next level, the Toyota Corolla AE86. It was a beautifully balanced front engine rear drive platform with a fantastic NA engine to boot. The only issue was he didn't have the money or the backing to get into one, especially considering the car was so new it wasn't even a proven racing platform at the time. But Tsuchiya knew this was the only way forward, and so he used his greatest skill as a gambling chip, his pace. Tsuchiya was fast as all hell, and with how many races he was winning in that little Toyota Starlet, he figured he could probably convince someone to let him race in something faster. And so he went to his sponsors with a proposition in mind, and after much negotiation, they told him that if he could win the Japan Touring Car Championship in his Starlet, then they'd bankroll a brand new AE86 race car just for him. So Tsuchiya's new AE86 was black. Yes, Keiichi Tsuchiya won that championship, of course, and left that starlet behind for an all-new platform. And to nobody's surprise, with this new AE86 Corolla, he was even faster. In very short order, he had six race wins under his belt piloting the Hachiroku. And he had such an advantage over the competition now that winning races almost became easy. Which gave way to a new problem. Tsuchiya got bored. It got to the point that he was so fast on track and so confident of his skill that he would start drifting corners mid-race just for the hell of it. He figured if he was bored, then the spectators were probably bored too. And he was there to give them a show, to get them energized, just like his idol Kunimitsu Takahashi would do. And we aren't talking about little fishtails and tight corners, no. This lunatic was sliding in the rain full opposite lock around the 100R corner at Fuji. Yes, the longest corner at the speedway. And eventually, he was having so much fun with the drift sideshows that he started to do it in every single race. And racing fans became so enamored with his sideways antics that they gave him a new name, Drift King. Yes, Keiichi Tsuchiya, a 28-year-old racing driver who was dominating the grip racing scene, became known as the Drift King. And despite how much he was goofing off, by 1985, he took first place in his AE86 at the All Japan Touring Car Championship. In 1986, he took two podiums at the Corolla Sprint Cup, and a year later, he said, let me try something new, and took a Honda Civic to a podium finish at the All Japan Touring Car Championship. Tsuchiya was quickly becoming the racing poster child in Japan, and he was having a blast doing it. At the same time, a new tuner car television show had just launched called Best Motoring. And of course, they wanted none other than Tsuchiya, the Drift King, to be the host. It was an amazing life. He went from being a street drifting kid to a racing champion TV host in less than a decade. But Tsuchiya had a different attitude than most with his newfound stardom. When he wasn't winning golds at Fuji or on TV with Best Motoring, he was right back where it all began for him, drifting the mountain roads. No matter how successful Tsuchiya got, you couldn't separate him from the toge that snaked along the Japanese mountainside. It was racing on those mountain roads that Tsuchiya felt at his best, no matter if he won or lost on track. Interestingly enough, around the same time as all this, the tuning industry in Japan was booming. Every tuning garage in the country was concocting new ways to make their mark on the market. And a few of those tuning houses realized that one of their own, a street racer, a tuner, was quick 
quickly becoming famous across Japan. So these tuning houses reached out to Tsuchiya and asked him if he wanted to work on a secret project, a street drifting video. It sounds strange, but for the time it was actually the perfect recipe. The tuners get advertisement for their parts and labor, and Tsuchiya gets a platform to showcase his skills right on his home turf, the toge. I think you guys know what Tsuchiya said. The video was called Plus B, a three-part series that practically went viral for 1980 standards. It featured Keiichi Tsuchiya in a beautifully built and tuned 8.6, sliding through the switchbacks and hairpins that dotted the Japanese hill country. It was shot with pro cameras and distributed anywhere they could sell it. And oh man, the tuning world went crazy. The impact of the Plus B series made the drift scene essentially explode overnight. Every kid with a license was watching those slow motion dories and wanted to be Keiichi Tsuchiya. Drifting got so popular because of that that eventually Carboy Magazine put on the first sanctioned drift event in Japan, an event that would be the platform for pro drifting to grow for years to come. But we'll get to that later. Because after the launch of Plus B, it wasn't all Doriftos and Donuts for Tsuchiya. The Japanese police had a vendetta against Plus B for the influence it had on the scene, and they pulled all of the tapes from market for showing illegal street drifting. But they didn't stop there. After banning Plus B, the authorities teamed up with the Japanese racing officials and suspended Tsuchiya's racing license. All those years of grinding his way to the top of pro racing and one street drifting video took down his entire career. But the 5-0 could do all they wanted. The impact that Plus B had on the street culture was already too massive for them to put the brakes on. And of course, the same could be said about the Drift King himself. Because they couldn't ban him forever. People wanted to see Tsuchiya on the circuit, and by 1988, his suspension was lifted. And Tsuchiya was back to winning races. First, he dominated the Toyota Cup Series, then got adventurous and raced a BMW E30 to score a podium. Then in 89, he got bored and raced in Japanese Formula 3. And when the 90s rolled around, he raced in pretty much anything they would let him drive. Japan Touring Car Championship in a Ford, New Zealand Touring Car Series in a Toyota, All Japan F3 Championship again, Japan Touring Car Championship in an R32 GTR, Japanese Endurance Series in a Honda Prelude, all leading up to 1994, when the drift came finally came full circle and teamed up with none other than his childhood hero, Kunimitsu Takahashi. You see, towards the end of his racing career, Takahashi decided to make his own racing outfit called Team Kunimitsu, a racing team that was originally only formed to race in the JTC series in 1992. But once the team had proven itself, they decided to race in JGTC in 1994. But Takahashi wanted a proper driver beside him in the series, someone who understood his racing style and was dangerously quick. Someone like Keiichi Tsuchiya. So Tsuchiya jumped into the Team Kunimitsu Porsche 911. And even though the rear engine Porsche was a totally different platform from what he was used to, Tsuchiya went on to win the Suzuka 1000 and the Sugo GT races. It was honestly a dream come true for Tsuchiya. Going from having his racing license suspended for illegal street shenanigans to once again proving that he could race with the best of the best in Japan. And alongside his lifelong role model, no less. And just one year later, Tsuchiya took that dream even further when he drove the infamous Kunimitsu NSX at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. And after battling stiff competition through a grueling race, he took first place in his class. No doubt a massive achievement for any racing driver, but just another chapter in the amazing story of Keiichi Tsuchiya. And it wasn't just in the driver's seat that Tsuchiya was hitting milestones. In 1996, the sport of drifting went overseas for the first time. Time. Option Video had put on an exhibition event at Willow Springs Raceway in California. And there they hosted drivers like Reese Millen and Brian Norris in a sport that was totally new to them, being judged for going sideways. The judges, Kenji Okazaki, Dajiro Inada, and Keiichi Tsuchiya. The exhibition was a massive success and planted the seed for drifting to not only grow in America, but all over the world. Tsuchiya himself was an integral player in the mission to spread the sport. But although he was a fan favorite drifting judge, his time in the driver's seat was still far from over. Over the next few years, he would be spotted racing in everything from Toyota Chasers to Dodge Vipers, and even a McLaren F1 GTR. 
Hell, in 1998, he even raced in a NASCAR exhibition. Tsuchiya may be known as the Drift King now, but his career was so much more than we were led to believe. A true student of the craft, somebody who not only loved to race, but continued to blaze trails in every genre of the sport. He went on to race at Le Mans a few more times, winning his class again and placing second overall in a Toyota GT1. Then he joined Team Arda to race alongside former F1 driver and team owner Aguri Suzuki in GT500. And after three dutiful years racing the Arda GT500 NSX, Keiichi Tsuchiya retired. Yes, finally. After all that, Tsuchiya announced to the world that he was done with circuit racing forever. And looking back at his racing career, Fuji Freshman, JTCC, F3, Sprinter Cup, Endurance Series, Toyota Cup, Le Mans, GT500, NASCAR, he could honestly say that he had done it all. He had lived the dream of every racing crazed kid in Japan, and it was finally time for him to hang up his helmet. Well, except... There was one race left for Tsuchiya. A special send-off made specifically for him. A retirement party, if you will, but not at the country club, at a racetrack. Hot version, the Japanese video magazine hosted the party at Scuba Circuit, and everyone showed up to pay their respects to Tsuchiya. Max Orito, Juichi Wakisaka, even tuning houses like Mine, Spoon, Amuse, and even TRD showed up, along with 5,000 spectators. It was a day jam-packed with the greatest names in racing ripping around Scuba Circuit at Max Attack, all in the honor of Keichi Tsuchiya. But the icing on the cake was saved for last when Tsuchiya jumped into his Arda NSX and set off to break the Tsukuba GT car track record. And of course, on his very last day as a professional racer, he broke the 53 second mark to become the GT car record holder. But if that wasn't enough, he went out for one more session right as the first flurry of snow started to fall and set another lap time of 51.875. This madman broke the record at Tsukuba and then shattered it again on the very same day. It was the perfect cherry on top of a legendary 30 plus year racing career. But even though his time in the driver's seat was now over, Tsuchiya's story doesn't end here. See, back in 2000, the All Japan Professional Drift Championship had started, or as most of us know it, the D1 Grand Prix. Option Magazine founder Daijiro Inada created the event with Tsuchiya and Orido judging, and their first ever event at Ebisu Circuit was a massive success. So they doubled down on pro drifting, and the D1 Grand Prix got bigger and bigger over the years, soon becoming the first name in professional drifting around the world. By 2007, the D1 Grand Prix was in Japan, America, UK, Malaysia, and New Zealand. And competitors' cars were being sponsored by tuning powerhouses like Blitz, Apexi, and HKS. It was a huge accomplishment in Tsuchiya's eyes, a way for him to continue to spread his love of cars and racing in a format that was far less illegal than the things he used to do. And when he wasn't yelling at airborne drift cars, he was in front of the camera somewhere talking about all things tuning, with numerous drifting specials, best motoring, and hot version all on television at this point. It's safe to say that by now, Tsuchiya was proper famous in Japan. But when both drifting and best motoring went international in the early 2000s, the Drift King's face was officially worldwide. In 2006, he even cameoed in Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift, a movie in which he also served as the stunt coordinator and stunt man. And thanks to his extensive racing knowledge, he became the go-to test driver for every tuning house in Japan. It got to the point that even his iconic green helmet and gloves became a mainstay of the JDM tuner scene. Hell, he was even featured on Initial D, an anime that he was also a technical director of. To this very day, Tsuchiya still makes new car shows, and every sports car that comes out of Japan also gets put to the Tsuchiya gauntlet. And despite all the fame and all the fortune, Tsuchiya still drives the very car that started it all for him, the humble Toyota Corolla AE86. All that to say, Keiichi Tsuchiya never forgot where he came from. Just a kid from a small Japanese village who loved to drive and loved to entertain. Somebody who didn't just watch the racing greats from the sidelines, but defied all odds and himself became not just a racing champion, but the Drift King. And to this day, someone who still pays forward all that he learned in his days racing cars and sliding for the crowd. By being not only a true showman, but also an inspiration for gearheads and racing fans around the world. 
Thanks for watching. Hit like if you liked the video and check out dbrand at the link in the description. And don't forget to subscribe and comment to win that thousand bucks. I'll see you guys in the next one.